Welcome back, everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42, and this is Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Anyways, in the last episode, we kind of had a bug, and hopefully, yes, awesome, it has fixed itself. And I believe I was in my deduction, and so I'm gonna go right on ahead and continue on. And this is literally just minutes after I stopped, and I had to close it, and I, yeah, reopen. An envelope is near the victim's head. Um, the envelope, the victim. Brought out by the victim. An envelope drifted. Maybe that? I actually don't know. An envelope fell during the murder. I want to say that the envelope belongs to the killer. But that doesn't also make any sense as well. Holding it in her left hand. I yeah. hear noise or coming from the street, Watson. The authorities are arriving. It's time for us to go. Yay, we did it. Holmes has been locked away in his room for days, always saying the same things. I'm thinking, Watson. Very good, Watson. As you wish, Watson. <sighs> Anyways, it's September 11th. And of course, all that is still the same. Oh, look at this. I didn't think I've actually... Holmes examined the broken jar that belonged to Finley's tenant. I wonder what this substance is. I don't recognize the odor. Formalin, Watson. This jar contained formalin. Interesting, don't you think? Hmm. I've been waiting for something for days. Just the tiniest bit of news that would make sense of this whole matter. But there's nothing, neither from the press nor the police. Unless Inspector Abeline is holding on to some information without realizing its importance, which is quite possible. It is time for you to return to the police station in Whitechapel, Watson. And didn't you tell me that you had a matter to take care of it? Take advantage of it to learn more about this pill and its contents. Ah, but Holmes, it's late. And spending another night in this district is hardly my idea of entertainment. I know, Doctor, but we don't have any choice. Time is against us. Take your pistol in case you run into any troublesome characters. Fine, uh -oh. as you wish, Holmes. We get some FPS shooting action going on. Anyways, in the background you can obviously hear the world's smallest violin playing a little sonata for uh, Watson and his crybaby state. Let's go to Whitechapel. I th I'm pretty sure we're going to look up to this guy. I'm pretty Good sure. Evening, Mr. Solomonovich. Good evening, Doctor. What a pleasure to see you again. You done with my harnesses? Have you finished converting the harnesses? Yes, just now. I got a little behind because of all the commotion. Awesome. What commotion? Commotion? Don't you start. Three days ago, the very afternoon that you passed by, there was a chase throughout the neighborhood. Hundreds of people were chasing one man, claiming he was responsible for the murders these last few days. Wow. Schmonts! It was awful. I hope those maniacs didn't catch him. Better the police should. <laughs> wow. What about Pizer? Tell me, did John Pizer turn himself in to the police? Things unfolded as they should. Look in the newspaper, the daily news from today. Can I have the newspaper, please? Farewell, Isaac. Goodbye, Doctor. Jimmy, yeah. The man who is now in custody. The police acceptance of the maniacal theory should be endorsed and encouraged. There is positive danger in the growth of any... Okay. Hmm. I'll let you guys read that for yourself. All you gotta do is just pause. And that's it. Okay. So we got the harnesses, which is awesome. And that is the white pill. Oh, it looks like a... Zyrtec to me. Okay, we got the harness for the prosthesis. So let's make our way to the clinic. Which is right here. What is the name of the clinic? Dispensary. Okay, well that's not a name. Or if it is, it is a very odd name. Hey, look, the footprints are gone. Somebody actually swept. Hey, do you ever do anything other than just look at your stuff? Yeah, I'm going to talk to you. Yes, Doctor? Or the harness? Here are your harnesses, Doctor. They are top quality, I'd say. Definitely worth the prize of this walking stick. Here, it's yours. Yeah, now let's talk about the formalin. Do you have any formalin here? 
No, definitely not. They have it in university hospitals to conserve anatomical specimens in jars. But in a little clinic like mine, we don't keep anything but bad memories. Okay, so it's used to preserve... Is that what they use to preserve uh, the earthworms that you dissect and the uh, cow well, eyes? Farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. Or cats. I must go to Miss Bella's. If you dissected a cat before. Yes, we must go back to the brothel. Make haste. I uh, don't need that. Of course, our uh, young friend, artist, will of course be at the brothel. Do you still do your funny voice? Out of the way, I don't like the look of you. Yep, you still do, Mr. Kermit the Frog. Oh, look, that spot. It's kind of still there. And he's not there. Good evening, ma'am. Um, your door was open. Isn't that a little dangerous? Not Hello, at all. Doctor, don't worry. If the looks of anyone who enters doesn't please me, me and my pistol know how to convince them to leave. It's like right there. Out of your reach. What about Annie Chapman? Do you happen to know Annie Chapman, the poor woman who was killed three days ago? Dark Annie? <laughs> Like all the drifters in the area, I've seen her once or twice. With respect to the dead, Annie really was the bottom of the barrel. What do you mean? Well, in our profession, the pretty young ones go out when night has barely fallen and don't have a problem finding takers. But poor girls like Annie or Polly Nichols, who aren't as tender and are often sick, sometimes trudge around for a whole night in the cold and the rain before landing a client. And that doesn't help their appearances either. They don't have much choice about paying for a bed for a few hours, a glass of gin or a hot meal. How terribly sad. <laughs> That's the price of survival in Whitechapel, my angel. One of my girls knew Annie for some time. They bought some jewellery on the black market, I think. Jewellery? How could Annie Chapman have possibly afforded jewellery? <laughs> Luxuries for a woman are always relative to her condition, Doctor. As a matter of fact, it was real cheap junk. Annie got three assorted brass rings, I think. <laughs> it's been said I have a memory for jewellery. Uh, so some kind of weird, uh, subtitly glitch thingy. Uh, that was definitely a black person, not black market person. Oh, Lucy. How is Lucy keeping? She's doing well, Doctor. But believe me, it won't last. Rare are the girls who can build a future in our profession. Oh, that's sad. I mean, she can use like 99% of her brain capacity. Very well. I shall let you get back to work, Ma. See you soon, my love. Actually, I do have a question. Do I have my gun? I don't have my gun. Can I take her gun? Actually, I do need to find, uh, what's his name? Oh, I guess I should just give the cane to her. You're still there, Doctor. The cane. I found the cane that was stolen from your client. Here it is. Doctor, you are a real saint. I can see that. I'll finally be able to present my bill to this damned painter. If by chance you see him, tell him that a little surprise awaits him here. Tumblety. You told me you would give me some information on this Dr. Tumblety. Agreed. He's a Canadian or an American. He parades from time to time through the neighborhood in a 50 guinea suit and acts like a doctor. But for business, he is. But for business, he isn't worth it. This damn Yankee hates women. The few times that he was approached by the girls, he spit on them, all the while hurling insults. It would seem that he was hunting for the bad boys. He's looking for trouble, that animal. Does he frequent any pub in particular? Aye, the Wasp's Nest on Burner Street, I think. A seedy spot even by our standards. All right, let's go. Very well, I shall let you get back to work, Mark. See you soon, my love. What was the name of that bar again? Well, I think we have a location on our map anyway, so... Let's go, let's get to it, right here. Yep, the Wasp's Nest pub on Burner Street. The Wasp's Nest. This pub looks even more disreputable than the Golden Lion in Baker Street. Oh. A loading screen. Oh, look! 
Monkey, who it is? Let's go talk to this guy first. Good evening, sir. Well, I know you. Why? We met at Miss Pullman's the other day. So you come to slum it in Whitechapel, eh? Yeah, how about Tumblety? Do you know Dr. Tumblety? A Canadian or American chap. Quite an extravagant dresser. Frequents this pub now and then. Are you intimate? Um, no. What do you mean by that? He's gay. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I just wanted to prove my discretion concerning this man. In so much and so far as I know him. You wouldn't like it if one day the tables were turned and everyone was talking about why you were in the borough. Isn't that so? Okay, let's talk about Miss Pullman. As it happens, I saw Miss Pullman recently. She told me that she couldn't wait to see you again. She said something about a surprise that is waiting for you at her establishment. Why, that is some of the best news I've heard, my friend. As thanks, I would like to let you in on a secret. The man that you were talking about, and whom I happen to know by sight, passed by and went through that little door that you see over there. Another man let him in. They weren't together for more than a few minutes, to be sure, eh? Yeah. Well, I will continue my search. Ah, uh, love. But what is this person trying to imply? <sighs> this matter is beyond me. You got some blood on your note there. Good evening, sir. It'll be the cool of my career, Governor said. Ha! <laughs> You'll make loads of dust of the paper, he said. Okay. You're a journalist? That's so. Tom Bulling at your service. <laughs> the Whitechapel ferret. The wizard with the scoop. You don't appear to be in a state to write anything, my friend. You're mistaken. Whiskey passes through the blood and turns into ink. Simple. <laughs> you see, mugs and inkwells are all the same. Don't you think you should settle your tab and go home? My red ink? Where's my red ink? I won't even pay half a halfpenny if they don't return my red ink. It's my blood you hear. The hell is this guy talking well, about? I'll be on my way. <coughs> Let's just call this guy Jack the Ripper and so we can get him out of this place. Uh Oh, look at this. What's this that? is the sink where the barmaid puts the glasses to soak. Look, red ink. What's that doing here? The bottle is closed. There must still be some ink inside, and it looks like a glass. The barmaid must have put ink into the sink by mistake. Right. Do I get in your way? Me? If you'll excuse me, sir. Uh. He has the same voice as another guy. Okay, so, red ink. Let's give it to him. You're the best. The boss told me. My red ink. Well, where's she be? Right here. I found your red ink, my friend. You should settle up and head home. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. The spring-heeled phantom will be revived. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Did, oh, for a second there, I was hoping that he had passed out or something. Can I take that note? It looks like bloody. Anyways, we have two people to talk to, so let's talk to her first. I'll Oi, talk to you. What'll it be to drink, Gav? Oh, never mind. Talk to you first. Greetings, my good man. Could I have a pint? No. Well, he's actually getting it for me. Here, Gav. But, Tumblety. I've been told that Dr. Tumblety might be found around here. Is that so? I don't do a roll call of all the drunkards here. I've got my hands full just making sure I get their money. Okay, okay, you're paid up. Here you go. It's on the journalist, my friend. I owe you one. The next one is on me. What'll it be? Nothing, thanks. But I may need your help. Access to... Oh, it's a locked door. How about that? Look, I did everything before I even knew there was a locked door. He's got a scar. Listen, my friend. I would like you to let me in the door over there. You're a bobby. A peeler? Absolutely not, my friend. I am a doctor. Fine. I owe you this at least. There's a bloke behind that door there. No pity Bluto. Let's just say he wants to lay low for a moment. So I don't think he'll be opening the door just now. Unless... Tell him you have word from Squibby. That'll open the door. But who can say what'll happen when the door closes? Uh... Goodbye, my friend. Oi, 
That's it. Uh, don't really want to go in there. Okay. Let me in. I I have news from Squibby, but stay calm. And who are you? Where's Squibby? He's out. To be honest, I don't actually know this squibby chap. I was actually wondering if you knew Dr. Tumblety, a Canadian or American fellow. He came in... Sure we know him. Excellent. Can you... You know about gas? I'm afraid not. I am a doctor. Then I ain't interested. You can be leaving now. But if I find out who snitched to the peelers, I'll find you. Got it? But I can pay you for... Keep your coins for the paupers, or one of the gas boys who ain't afraid of nothing and knows how to hold his tongue. You bring him to me, I'll meet with you. The heck was that guy going on about? Uh, okay. Can I talk to you again? Gav? Nope, don't Goodbye, say anything. my friend. Oi, that's it. It's like he's about to jump over the bar and strangle Oi, me. What'll it be to drink, Gav? You too? Okay. Um, I guess there's nothing else for us to do at the bar, so I have no idea what that guy was going on about. Actually, there is something that I haven't done quite yet. So I'm going to go back to the clinic. And we need to have a talk with our doctor friend. Where's my item? Pill. Yes, doctor? What about this pill? Could you tell me what type of pill this is? Yes, we have those here. It's not really a medication. We give them to patients with chronic respiratory conditions like tuberculosis. It is a placebo. Did you have a patient by the name of Annie Chapman? The woman killed three days ago. Indeed. She came in the morning of her death. Poor woman. Did you give her these pills? Yes, now that I think of it. She actually came in twice. The first time I gave her an almost empty container without making her pay. She came back during the day and said she dropped the container and stepped on the pills. She wanted to know if I could give her more again without paying. I refused. After she left, a patient who was there told me that he lives at the same place and confided that she had been lying. He saw the pills fall in the tenement's communal kitchen, but the woman immediately wrapped them up in a piece of paper. Where did this paper come from? According to this man, she'd found it near the chimney in the kitchen. Anyone could have thrown that paper there. That envelope can't have anything to do with the murder. Pardon, Doctor? Uh, nothing. I was just talking to myself. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. Uh, to be fairly honest, it's probably the Doctor who's the uh, Jack the Ripper. Okay, so we did that little part. And so now we need to figure out exactly what to do. So we need to find somebody. A gas person. Right at the brothel. I guess we can check. Let's go. We'll check all the locations real quick. Thank you. Open the door. Good evening. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all, Doctor. This man, Mr. Richardson, is a witness to the horrid affair at 29 Hanbury Street. The murder of Annie Chapman. We are discussing the relevance of his testimony. Ooh, a witness. You're probably not in a position to discuss it with me, but I would like to know more about what you call the relevance of this young man's testimony. Oh, there's no secrecy. It's simply that the testimony given by Mr. Richardson doesn't match the time of death given by the coroner, Dr. Phillips. What was the time of death, according to him? Before half four in the morning. Hmm, other witnesses? My conclusions were the same. Were there any other conflicting testimonies? Well, two other witnesses summoned at the preliminary inquest gave testimony, but in these cases too, the times don't match. Do you remember what it was they said? I didn't question them myself. A colleague of mine took down their statements on paper, but on deciding they were of little use, he tore them up and threw them in the bin. There's no point in being bogged down with useless paperwork. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. Okay, so we did that. Oh, let me talk to this guy. May I introduce myself? I'm Doctor Watson. I am... You want to be the chap what writes the detective stories in that air paper? Well, yes, indeed. My stories have been published in the Strand. Go, oh, blimey. Wanna tell me, old mum? 
It would seem your testimony is the subject of some debate. Could you tell me what it was about? Ah, uh, they'll be telling I'm a bit befuddled about the times that I told them. But it can't be so. I knows what I sees and what I don't sees that morning. What did you see, or what didn't you see? And at what time, would you say? I'll tell you this for nothing. It's me old mum who lives at the house where the body was found out back in the garden. She has her shop at the bottom to the right of the stairs. Her door was broken down not too far back, cos it's a real zoo it is. Right, the morning it happened, I head that way to see if me old mum has finally had the place broken into. It was caught to five when I got there. That I'll swear on me dear old mum's life. I had a look round to see if the cellar had been taken. No. I had a little sit down on the stairs by the courtyard, cos me shoes were causing me no end of pain, and I had a cut and all. I didn't see a single thing below the steps, Doctor, not one single thing. If there was some bird all covered in blood, taint no how I could have missed that, even if it were night time. Right, five minutes after getting to number 29, I had to clip off. And now they tells me that either I can't tell time no more, or I was fixing me loafer next to a stiff that was still steaming. All right then, evening gents. Did anybody understand anything that guy just said? Oh my gosh! Yes, Doctor? Okay, how about the murders? So, how far along are the investigations into these two recent murders? Everyone around here believes both crimes were committed by the same man. But as for the Hanbury Street and Bucks Row crimes, nobody has heard or seen a thing. Hmm. How about Tumblety? By the way, have you heard of a Dr. Tumblety? Um, no. Is it important? Yes. Well, no, maybe. Actually, I don't know. I have heard about this man, his frequent nocturnal outings and bizarre behavior. What does this chap look like, Doctor? And where can we find him? Uh, Finley. The last I heard was that he was staying at Finley's place, the man who was looking for me a few days ago. It would greatly assist us if you could ask Finley what your strange associate looks like. We could then see if the description matches any witness accounts. Okay, so let's go talk to I Finley. Will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. Let's go talk to Finley. I actually knew someone named Humphreys once in high school. Who cool dude, that guy? Look at that red dress. Alrighty, Finley, are you still painting that door? Nope, you're sweeping this time. Hmm. There is a strong smell of gas. It seems to be coming from the abandoned building. Oh shit, it's gonna explode, isn't it? I don't wanna go up there. It's gonna explode. I know it. We're gonna talk, and then all of a sudden it's gonna be like... Oh. Hmm. There is a strong smell of gas. It seems to be coming from the abandoned building. It's gonna be like the first Sherlock Holmes movie with Robert Downey Jr. Where they explode all over the place. Oh, uh, I'm gonna talk to this guy. Good evening, Finley. How are you? Oh, good evening, Doctor. So, so. And you? I swear, like, all these guys are voiced by the same guy. It smells of gas here. Ah, you might say, Doctor. Without wanting to speak ill of the force, I have to wonder if the police are up to something. What do you mean? Well, I was outside yesterday evening when the light went out at my place, and a gas smell came from the abandoned building across from my place. And a minute later, the police arrived and were snooping all around like it was them who hit the gas before arriving. Nah. Have things sorted themselves out with your strange tenant? Don't talk about it, Doctor. That man is truly bizarre. He goes to the most sordid locations once night falls. Three days ago, my wife told me she saw him come in with blood-stained clothes and a fearsome look. Really? Interesting. What does he look like, and how old is he? Oh, he's my age, give or take. So, the other side of 50. He's always dressed in a striking manner, with an American hat. He's big, close to 5'11", I'd say. He has a strange voice. Not just his accent, see? His voice. Hmm, okay. Uh, do we get to the explosions now? Very well. Goodbye for now, Finley. Goodbye, Doctor. Now then, let's go to the police station. I know, is it gonna explode if I move? I'm running. 
Ah, I hate it. Surprise explosions. Kaboom. I swear, that's what's gonna happen. There's gonna be an explosion. Okay, man, I gotta talk to you. Yes, Doctor. About Tumblety's description. Tumblety is a man around 5 foot 11, about 55 years old, extravagantly dressed and with a rather distinctive voice. He boards at Finley's. You should know where that is, as the police were there only yesterday. Their arrival coincided with a strange gas leak. Ah, yes, I know where you mean. Indeed, there was an odd affair with the gas. It was rather unsettling. We were searching for a well-known scoundrel who was ratted out by Squibby, the chap we followed and saved from the pack a few days ago. This thug, no pity Bluto, must have been in the abandoned building in question. But there was no sign of him when we arrived. Furthermore, an inspector said that, given the smell, the thingamabob that supplies gas to the building was probably damaged. So we took no risks and were called away somewhere else. Hmm... Interesting. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. Okay. So we at least know what that. So it doesn't look like there's much of anything else to do. I don't think Finley will tell us anymore, so I think we have to resolve the issue at the bar. Explosion? Explosion? Any explosions? Let me talk to you real quick. Anything else, Doctor? I guess not. Very well. Goodbye for now, Finley. Goodbye, Doctor. Let's see. Is there anything up here? No? Okay. So nothing up in the boarding house, so let's go back to the bar. To the pub, I guess. Hey, go inside. No, up. it would be better not to insist. Really? It would be better not to insist? Okay. Gav? No. Nope. Goodbye, my friend. Oi. No. No. I didn't want to talk Goodbye, to you. Goodbye, my friend. Oi. Okay, so I don't think there's anything in our inventory to get rid of, so I guess we're just gonna go around. We've been there, we've been there. I doubt Lucy has anything for us. Nope. About the broth. Let's go to the broth. Because we did send that one guy here. You're still there, Doctor? Mm -hmm. I'm always here. Very well. I shall let you get back to work, Ma. See you soon, my love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing going on in here. Okay, so that's the brothel off the list. How about the clinic? What you got for me, Doc? Yes, Doctor? Nothing. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. It must seem very strange that Watson's just going around to random people, just saying, Yep, hey, hello, goodbye. Oh! Where's your monkey, man? Where's your monkey? I have nothing to ask. Ask him where the monkey is. Who's that? A oh, white chapel. I have no reason to go that way. Still have no reason to go that way, okay. How about the cobbler shop? Got anything for me, man? Probably not. What can I do for you, doctor? Yeah. Farewell, Isaac. Goodbye, doctor. Well, I guess now will be as good as time as any to call it an episode since we're nearing the half hour mark. I'm probably gonna explore a little bit and figure out what exactly what I'm supposed to do. So thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to comment down below and leave a like for the video go ahead check the description for my facebook and twitter information i'm always looking for a few more friends and check the annotations at the end to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and for the series playlist and other playlists i have put together i will see you oh look at that carriage I'll go that way i have no reason to uh, go that way i could like get run over by a carriage anyways i will see you in the next video